Uh, let's do Imperial Japan. Fascist? Does he say, like, proto- or semi-fascist? He, fascism he, from yeah, above, he, right? he gives them, like, little sprinkles of fascism. He, he, would, he would say, like, if it's a cake, right? It's, it's a traditionally authoritarian cake with um, fascist icing. They're doing fascism appropriation, okay? <laughs> They're doing cultural appropriation. They're doing aesthetic and cultural appropriation. No, let's, but seriously, I mean, so... so it's like the point about um, Islamo, so-called Islamofascism, um, Japanese, whatever you want to call it, did not emerge from a liberal democracy. It did not emerge, and it certainly didn't emerge from a crisis of liberal democracy. Right. Though maybe a crisis of hyper-industrialization. Uh, yes. Um, it was a, it was a, I see it as a project that was imposed on the population from above as a result of, like, sharing some of the same ambitions that the fascists did in terms of, like, national... And yeah. there were fascist movements, small, like stage one fascist movements in Japan, but they were assassinated and, and uh, snuffed out. Yeah, crushed. Totally right. crushed, yeah. yeah. But you saw the same obsession with racial hierarchy, with yep. purity, with, with violence. You saw like the same deployment of uh, propaganda on a mass scale. You saw the imperialism, right? And they, they also had their own like kind of uh, national myths as well that like propagated their desire for almost like endless war. Yeah, um, right. I, I don't know if this is a trope or not. It's just something I heard. And, you know, if it's <laughs> if it's not a real thing, someone please correct me. But uh, when the Mongols tried to invade Japan like 400 years ago, uh, they got taken out by typhoons twice. So that's where like the phrase kamikaze comes from. It's like d- divine wind. Um, and, it, and it instilled like, I guess, I guess it was like in Shinto ideology that like Japan is, uh, uh, what's the word? Not eternal, but... Uh, when you can't be hurt, like immortal, yeah, it's it's imp- un- impenetrable or invincible. Invincible is the word I'm looking for, which kind of uh, you know, allows for like the bonsai charges and and kamikaze pilots and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had the the also the samurai spirit, which was a, an idea. I mean, the modern conception of the samurai spirit was largely invented uh, as as a kind of a proto fascist ideological apparatus, like what we what we think of as Westerners or even as like quote-unquote modern Japanese people would think about as a samurai spirit is largely invention of, like, late 19th, early 20th century uh, propaganda. Uh, there's actually this book that this Japanese author wrote for a Western audience that was all about connecting the so-called samurai spirit to Christianity. Wow. And it was a big, it was a big hit in the West, but nobody in Japan liked it. All the, the Japanese historians said this is total bullshit. This has nothing to do with reality. But Westerners really liked it. Um, and so that was actually seen as one of the early currents of like fascist ideology in Japan is, is that. But also um, uh, being inspired by the fascist movements of Germany and Italy, right? And wanting to do a lot of that. So again, we see some similarities, but some lacking necessary preconditions like yeah i would say i would say like the the similarities that we see with islamofascism or or japan like the similarities are the aesthetic similarities or like the least important similarities they're not like the core defining features of fascism that they should uh they don't share those core features like popular uh popular movements or mass politics ma- yeah mass politics it was it was yeah. done by the elites for the elites it didn't involve a coalition right yeah 